Hello and welcome to the third Advanced Panel Pilot Ace tutorial video. In this tutorial video I'll be showing you how to make variables as well as how to toggle them using buttons on the screen. So following on from our last time we'll need to be adding the buttons here to toggle between degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit as well as the toggle button here to toggle with the clock display visibility. So in order to do this, first we'll make the visual elements. Now we're going to need a rectangle with gradients similar to before, so I'm going to copy and paste these. Uh, and these are going to be the background for our text. So for example, and now on top of this we're going to need to add a checkbox. So for this I'm going to take a black circle. Now uh, this has a size of 42, so I'm going to make that 40 now. And I'm going to give this circle a size of 30 and make it 30 by 30 so that it is fully round. So actually that circle's probably a bit on the small side. So I'm actually going to resize this box up to 35 uh, 45, sorry, in height and then give this a size of 40 by 40 now the x position of there sorry the y position of this is I'm going to really give to 100 <coughs> now if this is size 40 and this is size 45 we're going to want 102.5 uh, point 0.5, sorry. There you go, that should be directly in the centre. Now within this we're going to want a little checkbox. So I'll drag in another eclipse. Now this is 40 by 40, so I'm going to make this 20 by 20 and see how that looks. When I place it directly in the centre of this. So 188, 40 is going to be 208 and that's the center so it's width is 10 so minus 10 from that is going to give us 198 now this height is 102.5 here so if we add 10 to that we should get 112.5 and there we have it, we have our little toggle box here. So actually I think that circle is a bit on the big side still, so I'm going to take 5 off of it. And now I need to move it 2.5 in both directions. So I'll move this up to 200. And move this to 115. And there you have your toggle box. So next I'm going to add the text box next to it. Now this is going to re uh, I'll label this uh, Celsius label and give it the text value Celsius. So I want to resize this just so it fits better inside the box. And now I want to reposition it so that it's in the middle on the right hand side. And I'm going to take this slightly further away. So I want this repeated again, sorry, for the Fahrenheit. So I'm simply going to select all of these elements using the control button, copy and paste them, and then drag them down below. And now I can rename this to Fahrenheit. As you can see, these are now aligned on the right hand side and these are the only other variables we're going to need to change so I'm going to name this Celsius toggle and Fahrenheit toggle and there you have it so next up is simply to add the clock so I'll need to copy these one more time and paste them and this is going to read clock visible 
Uh, so this needs to be a slightly bigger box just to fit that text in. And I want to move it slightly to the right as well, just so it's further from the edge. So now that we have this, and uh, we have our final toggle switch, I just need to rename them. Clock label. And I'll rename this here to clock toggle. So now that we have all of our visual elements added, <coughs> the next thing we need to add are our variables. So the variables we need to add are all Boolean variables. So the first one I'll add is going to be called is Celsius. Since there are only two states, it'll either be Celsius or it won't and it'll be Fahrenheit. And likewise, one more Boolean variable, which I'm going to call clock visible. So for the clock visible, we want that to default to being true, since we want the clock to be visible by default. And likewise, we want is Celsius to be defaulting to true, since we're defaulting to Celsius as well. Now, for these two, Celsius and Fahrenheit, only one of these buttons should be visible at any one time. So I'm going to start Fahrenheit off as invisible, so that Celsius is selected by default. With the clock visible, this is merely going to disappear and reappear. There is no need for it to toggle between two different boxes. So now that these have been added, the next thing we need to do is to add the buttons. So these are going to allow us to run an action when a certain object is pressed. So we need three buttons. The first button is going to be when Celsius is clicked. And I'll rename it as such. The visual element related to that is going to be the Celsius toggle. Uh, actually, I'm going to make it the eclipse behind it. So I'm going to call this Celsius Eclipse. And rename this Fahrenheit Eclipse. And finally, Clock Eclipse. Now that I've renamed that, I'll come back to this and I'm going to select the visual element to be the Celsius Eclipse. And this one here will be the Fahrenheit. Clicked. And this will be triggered off of Fahrenheit Eclipse. And finally, the clock clicked. And this will be triggered off of the clock eclipse. <coughs> so now that we have all of our buttons, events will occur when they are pressed. So at present, no actions have actually been created, so nothing will run. So the next thing we need to do is to create these actions. So we're actually going to use the action set rule element. And we're going to need three of these. So, firstly, in fact, we'll just start with one for now. The first one, this is going to be used to set the clock visible. So, we'll need one action that will set clock, set clock invisible. And what we want this to do is to set the clock visible variable to a boolean false and as well as that we want to change the property of our clock toggle and we want to change its visibility to false so there you go so set clock invisible will now s remove this toggle in the middle and we'll set the proper uh, project variable clock visible to false in fact, we should also change it so that the clock text, so digital clock, and its visibility property is also set to false. So now this will disappear as well. So the other state we're going to need to be able to set to is set to Celsius, set to Fahrenheit, and set the clock to visible once more. So I'll need one more action rule for the clock. So this is going to be set clock visible. And we're going to set the expressions 
clock visible equals true. We'll also need to set the property clock toggle dot visible equals boolean value true. And finally, the digital clock text box is visible property is going to need to be set true as well. So we've done both of the clock actions. So next we need the two temperature actions. So this is going to be set Celsius. And in this property, we are going to set the variable is Celsius to true because this is set Celsius. So we need Boolean value true. And we are going to need to set the visibility of this toggle. So property Celsius toggle dot visible is going to need to be true. And finally, the toggle for Fahrenheit is going to need to be set false. So finally, we just need to add the set Fahrenheit action. So for this, we'll need to set the is Celsius value to false. The property Celsius toggles visibility is going to need to be set to false as well. And finally, the Fahrenheit toggle visibility is going to need to be set to true. So now that we have all of our set actions, we're actually going to need to perform checks in order to see whether we should be setting them to visible, invisible, or Fahrenheit or Celsius. So in order for this to occur, we're going to need an if statement. And this is going to be based upon a logic builder. So we need two logic builders. The first of which is going to be used for the clock. So here we will check is clock. And for this, all we need to do is check if the variable clock visible, oops, sorry, clock visible equals, and then it needs to check the Boolean value true. Okay, and so this is going to be run whenever the clock button is pressed. So clock clicked, we need to run is clock. And then if clock visible equals true, we'll need to set clock invisible since that's the next state. Otherwise, we'll need to set it to visible. So with that done, our clock functionality should be complete. Next up, we need to check is Celsius. Which apparently is taken, uh, since it's our variable name. So I will rename it is Celsius2. And for this rule, we simply need to check once again whether the is Celsius variable equals boolean true. So if this is the case, so actually we need to check, we need a different check for each of these two checkboxes. So this is only going to occur when Fahrenheit is pressed. So that these two don't toggle. If you hit Fahrenheit twice, it won't toggle between the two you have to hit the correct one. So is Celsius true will run and if it is true it's going to do nothing. Uh, sorry, it's going to change to Fahrenheit, so set Fahrenheit. And if it's false it's going to do nothing. Likewise we actually need one more logic builder that's going to be is Fahrenheit and that's going to be called when Celsius is clicked to check if it actually needs to toggle. So here we'll do if Celsius equals boolean true. Uh, sorry, boolean false is what I need for that. And if it is Fahrenheit, then we're going to set to Celsius. Otherwise, we're going to do nothing. So on our Celsius clicked, we're going to check is Fahrenheit. 
and on our Fahrenheit clicks we're going to check is Celsius 2 since this Celsius was taken. So now if we run the emulator and we toggle to our other screen we should be able to toggle these two values between each other. So this means that the variables are in fact changing. However at present the value for the units isn't changing and neither is the value on the other screen or for that matter is the default value it loads into so we'll be covering in the next tutorial how you can implement it so that these variables are set when the screen is loaded appropriately so that's it for the third tutorial thank you for watching